So far we have been working a lot with mass transfer coefficients, but now it's time to work with mass transfer correlations, which will allow us to calculate the mass transfer coefficient. The interesting part right here on correlations is that you will typically input data which is typically known in a system, such as density, viscosity, velocities, concentrations, gradients, and so on. So here we go. Mass transfer coefficients, from MTC, are not physical properties like diffusion coefficient. So this is very important to differ. Diffusion coefficient is actually a physical property of any substance. And mass transfer coefficient is rather a construct, or let's say an equation that relates that. They differ from case to case and even within a system depending on their definition. As you can imagine, correlation will depend on the figure, on the applications, type of flow, is it countercurrent, co-current, is it inside the tube, outside the tube, is it in a sphere or many spheres, are they vertical, horizontally, gravitational field, and so on. There are many things that can and will be used in a correlation. Experimental data are usually obtained by blowing gases over various shapes, wet with evaporating liquids, or causing liquids to flow past solids, which dissolve. So essentially, main applications are they blow a fluid, a gas, into a shape and expect and calculate the rate of evaporation and they relate then a correlation or they may be using liquids uh, flowing through past solids which are dissolving which of course this is not the case we are not considering solids right now extensive data have been obtained for the transfer of mass between a moving fluid and certain shapes so as you can imagine shapes that are used in engineering flat plates spheres cylinders Fluid flow through pack beds, this is an important one. Uh, gas bubbles, okay, this is also important. Rising in a tank. Falling films, also very important. Flow over surfaces and within tubes, of course, also important. These techniques include a lot of mass transfer uh, phenomena. For instance, sublimation of a solid, vaporization, dissolution of a solid in water, or dissolution of gases. Between gases, and the solution of gases in liquids. These are, of course, depending on the nature of the mass transfer. You will not typically use a correlation of vaporization with one of the solution. These data have been correlated in terms of dimensionless parameters, so that's important. Remember dimensionless numbers such as Reynolds, Nusselt, Grasshoff, and so on. And the equations obtained are used to estimate the mass transfer coefficient. So yeah, what we want eventually is to calculate the k-value in other moving fluids and geometrically similar surface, if not the same. Of course, if you're talking about a pipe, straight pipe, or a vertical pipe, or if you're talking about a falling film in a wall or a falling film in a cylinder, you will need to verify that your correlation applies. Average rather than local mass transfer coefficients are usually obtained, which is great. In most cases, the data are reported in terms of k-type, so a lot of k-values will be found. Applicable to the binary system, so not only k-values, but also UMD, which requires a stagnant layer. Typically, there are no details concerning the actual concentrations of solute during the experiments, so no concentrations means that we can use whatever concentration? Yeah, more or less. Fortunately, the experimental concentrations are usually low, so that is necessary. Conversions of the data of the corresponding F can be taken. So this, if you don't remember or you don't know what we're talking about, this F value, please go back into the mass transfer coefficient, especially when we talk about the UMD case and EMD cases in which the F typically is shown a lot, is the concentration times the diffusivity of A and B and the delta in C. Recall that for UMD case, we had a log mean value. And we also recall that if the solvent was much greater in quantity than the solid, we can assume that the 
log mean value is relatively near to one and if this is true then we get a f value which applies for both cases umd and emd and if you don't know what i'm talking about make no worries this is just theoretical concepts we're going to dive strictly to correlations how to work with them and how to calculate them these are examples of correlations i found online uh, it's your task to verify the source of your correlations and of course if you are in working already in a lab it will be great if you can test them before actually modeling other type of units or uh, trying to model or design an equipment for instance liquid in a packed tower so if you're talking about a a maybe you're talking about a packed reactor and you want to verify what will be the mass transfer in that reactor so here it goes k value which of course will be the mass transfer coefficient this is i think uh viscosity gravity yeah here it goes v0 average film velocity uh, a stands for packing area d actually let me verify where is it no, I cannot find it. Anyways, here are all the important variables. And there are several, uh, for, for instance, here you have three equations. You're going to know which one is better for you. And here you have it on remarks. If you are talking about a liquid-liquid reaction, then use this one. If you're talking about a gas-gas reaction, then use this one. You have many applications. For instance, pure gas bubbles in a stir tank. So if you're talking about a tank if you're in agitation or if you're working with a chemical reactor well and you want to model the mass transfer within you can do it falling films are also classic membranes we're not watching that right now but you can find them turbulent flow through horizontal slit or circular pipe uh, laminar flow more on pack beds spinning discs and so on we're not going to work on these specific tables because I want to show you the most common ones. Well, yeah, let's see. Yeah, I think it's the most common ones that you will encounter in engineering. I was going to split this lecture, but I think it's better to do it right now. So far, we know that there are correlations and depending on the applications, we need to find a correlation. In my opinion, we have all these flow past flat plates coefficient, or flow past a solid sphere, single cylinder, rotating disc. But these are very theoreticals. In my opinion, fluids flowing through pipes, fluids flowing through pack beds, and fluids or, or drops and bubbles are very common in liquid gas operations, specifically for gas absorption and distillation. So let's see how it goes.